This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast. Now, this is episode 60, the Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, movie review. I'm your host, Alex Figueroa, and my co-host is... Nate from Netflix Reviews. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, please hit that like button. If you enjoyed this review, hit those notification bells so every time the videos are out, you guys will be notified. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button so you guys can get more awesome uh, action movie reviews. And also... And if you're listening to us on the go, be it Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, whichever platform you use, make sure you make sure you subscribe. Get those auto downloads every week so you don't have to worry about it. When the new episodes drop twice a week, they'll come right to you. Leave us a star rating. Leave us a review if you enjoy what you're hearing. And make sure you tell your friends. All right, so the way this is going to go is we're going to hit you guys with the box office numbers. Then we're going to go right to Rotten Tomato scores and then right into our movie review. But first, how long has it been since Nate seen this film? It's been a few years since I had seen Raiders. That's what we're doing. So as, and as a whole, I've, I've seen each movie a couple of times. This is not my go-to franchise. But it's a franchise I love because Spielberg is my favorite director. So, you know, it is one I've seen and I enjoy. I just it's not like one of those that I reach for all the time. So it's been a couple of years since I've seen it. Yeah, I mean, also the same here, but I enjoy watching this entire franchise and I can't wait to deep dive into these each of these films and then get to that Crystal Skull because that one I always have problems watching. But now <laughs> we get to de- we get to uh, analyze and break it down and see if I would enjoy it the second time around because I only seen this movie once. So with that said, know. let's go with the box office numbers for Raiders of the Lost Ark from 1981. Now with that, now the numbers are domestic was 248 million, international Jeez. 141 million, worldwide for 389 million dollars on a budget of 18 million dollars. What do you think? That is highly profitable for. You know, 81, though, you know, 300 and something million, almost 400 million in 81 yeah. is probably more than double that. Now it's 30, 40 years later, 40 years later, it's probably a billion, I, I would guess, or close to it. So, yeah, that's a it's a massive, massive hit. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big hit. But now let's get right into the Rotten Tomato scores for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Right. So Raiders of the Lost Ark, unsurprisingly, with box office numbers like that, extremely well liked, ex- loved, you might say. Uh, 95% from critics, 96% from audience. So this is, uh, we're talking about one of the, you know, the high level big league films historical. So yeah, everyone, everyone likes this movie. I mean, I don't know how it has even not a hundred, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, look, it is what it is, but you know what we say here on the action movie guys podcast, like the rock always says, it doesn't matter. What the critics or the audience score is, because you guys are here to hear yeah. what we have to say about the movie. So with that said, let's start it off with the lead character, Indiana Jones himself, Harrison Ford. Nate. Yeah, so this was one of the easiest reviews that I've had to, uh, one of the easiest ones I've scored. Probably, I would go so far as to say this was the easiest scoring I had to do since Terminator 2. Way back, one of our first episodes. Terminator 2, I think to this day, the only perfect 25 I've done. I I don't think I've done another one, but this was very, very easy. Now, I saw this at the theater. It was a glorious experience. I (laughs) recommend it. It's it's a great if if any time it's playing in a theater near you, see it in the theater. It's meant to be seen on a big screen. That being said, it's a five. Uh, Harrison Ford is iconic. You know how you watch a movie and you get a role for like You see an actor in a role. And it's and you could literally say, like, that is an iconic role. Right. Harrison Ford has two. Han Solo is an iconic role. And Indiana Jones is an iconic role. It is in all the whenever you watch like a like a what is that thing called? Um, Like a montage of all the films in history. Mm -hmm. Almost all of them have a shot of Indiana Jones in there putting on the hat, cracking a whip, something. And Harrison Ford's great in the role. I love him. I love him in this movie. Uh, You know, he was a stud stud. You know, he's in his primo physically, you know, and I I love the character because he's not although he's an adventurer and although he's, you know, like he's a he's a he's a man's man. He's got fears, right? Definitely, definitely scared of snakes. He's a he's a school teacher, you know, a college teacher. He's he's got humanity to him. He's not a superhero, although he is great at what he does. He's a great archaeologist and he just loves history and he loves artifacts. He's a great guy. I love him. Five out of five. 
Yeah, look, I totally agree with you. Um, I was doing some research while you were talking about it because I wanted to see characters, actors that were offered the role before we got Harrison Ford oh. because he was not the number one guy. OK, number one guy was Jack Nicholson was going to be and he turned it down now. OK, let's just see this. Let's just think quick here. Could he play this role? No. no. He does not have that charisma that Harrison Ford has. He oozes charisma. And that's what you got here, right? He's a ladies' yeah. man because he gets slapped all over the place in all these films, which is kind of funny, yeah. right? He has Remember charisma. all the girls in the class? They're yeah. all like just daydreaming about him while he's teaching. Yeah. I yeah. love that scene. Her yeah. eyes say, like, I love you on them. Yeah. He's all stunned <laughs> looking at, at her. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing about Harrison Ford that he brought to this role. He brought the Han Solo but into an adventure version of Han Solo, right? If you really think about it, he's Han Solo, but just just put a hat and a whip on the guy. Take away his uh, blaster and chew I, I would say the, the only difference would be Han has a little more of that bad boy swag, yeah. whereas Indiana Jones has more of that good guy swag. But they both got swag. You know what I mean? That, yeah. That's the that charisma you're talking about. Just one is a little more good and one's a little more of the, the edgy. And and you know what? It worked for him. And for me, yeah. I love it. And I think that's why this was a massive hit is because of Han, uh, because of <laughs> is because of Harrison of Han Ford, Solo. because of Han Solo, <laughs> because of Harrison Ford donning the ki- the cape, the hat, and the whip. Now, before yeah. we go on to the main villain, I just want to tell you, Danny DeVito was almost Sala, his best friend. <laughs> I, I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Now, Marilyn sure. was going to play Deborah Winger. Uh, I cannot Mary- see. No, I, 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 I like, uh, I like who they can. And I Jonathan Pierce. Was going to play Bullock and he turned it down. That's okay. Yeah. All the casting was perfect. Yeah, the turned, casting like, was perfect. The yeah. only one that I could see, I could see Danny DeVito playing Sala, yeah. but um, Jonathan, uh, what's his name? Jonathan Reese Davies, who plays him, he's perfect in the role too. Either one, well, I could see DeVito doing it. Yeah, he's all right. So, goofy, you know, yeah, all right. So I gave Harrison Ford a, a, a five. There was no way I could give him lower than a five because this is his role and no one could take it away from him. So, with that said, let's get to the main villain Bullock and he was good okay he was he was a good villain but a he's not around in the whole movie as much but again it's an adventure movie so you got him in a little bit in the beginning and then you got him a little bit throughout the towards uh, towards the middle towards the ending right like towards that that yeah. entire piece he's sprinkled here and there but it's mostly Nazis throughout the towards the end he's just a little bit there so we we decided to go with Bullock because most of the time he's there anyway and yeah, so uh, he's not a villain villain. I was just like, eh. he he didn't do much. He never got to fight Indy. All he did was steal his stuff. He was like a bully, right? Like he goes, ah, oh, you got it. And he goes, look, at, you know, <laughs> what's my favorite scene? He goes, once again, Dr. Jones, whatever you possess is mine. And I'm like, you son of a <laughs> yes. crap. You don't do nothing. <laughs> um, exactly, though. He got you upset. He got me upset. He no, no, he you. always yeah. gets me upset. Even when he got the arc, right? Yeah. Like, and I, and that got me mad. But I was like, look, it is what it is. I gave him a three and a half. Okay, I thought he was a good villain. But when we look at an entire villain for me, I want him to go up against the hero, right? Fight one on one, punch him in the face. Like I don't care. But he didn't do that in this movie. But look, no. I'm not saying he was a horrible villain. He is a really good villain, but. He has to have other traits, too. Like, you got to fight, shoot some guns. He didn't do none of that in this movie. So with that, I had to deduct some points. But I gave him a three and a half for good. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I, I totally understand. I, I equate him to more like, uh, for lack of a, you know, a, a better example, if you watch wrestling, you know, he's a heel, but he's not like, he's not like Andre the Giant <clears throat> when he was going against Hulk Hogan. He's more of the, he's more of the honky tonk man. You know, he's not very imposing. He's not intimidating. He'll probably run. He's a coward. He's kind of a coward. But gosh darn it, if he doesn't get on your nerves, he's a great foil, right? Every time, he's the villain who links up with the more muscle every time, right? Yeah. Indiana Jones in the beginning, he's going to get the idol. He has the two friends. He has Dr. Octopus and that other guy. <laughs> and um, and then, yeah, yeah, you got young Alfred Molina. And yeah. then they go to get the thing and he gets turned on and, what does do? Belloc comes out. He's got a whole tribe of natives. He's like, yeah. well, you should have, you should have worked with these guys instead of those guys. Later on, <laughs> Indian Jones has got his, you know, he's got Sala. He's got the girl. This guy's got all the Nazis behind him. So he, he always has the bigger muscle behind him. But yeah. he's just there. He's like the anti Indiana Jones. He loves artifacts, but he wants them for money. He's a so weasel. as a yeah, he's a weasel. So as a foil, I think he's great. I agree. He's not tough. He doesn't fight. He doesn't do nothing. I gave him a four. 
He's not a five for me. That's not bad. Um, yeah. yeah. But I like the act. I think the, the performance is really good. Yeah. Um, I like the scene with uh, with him and um Marin? him and Marion in the tent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're drinking and he's, oh, he's laughing or whatever. <laughs> you could tell like he was like not that drunk, but she as drunk as she thought he was, you know. He's he's smart. So I, I like him, but I, he's not a perfect villain by any means. Four. Yeah, all right. So let's get into <laughs> action scenes. Uh, all right, now listen. <laughs> you know, when we when we're talking about these movies, we're talking about action movies, you yeah. know what I mean? And you know, we're talking about movies from different decades and different times and different yeah. formats. And this movie's made in 1981. This is a 40-year-old movie. Mm-hmm. And it's an adventure film. So this is not a, you know, this is not Rambo. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the set pieces are so good. They're filmed so well. They're, uh, you know what? And especially watching that at the theater, I just love that it's real human beings like hanging off of cars, getting drug underneath cars, yeah. jumping off of, you know, there's, it's stuntmen, it's stunt drivers, it's actual explosions. It's not CG. There's no CGI. Now there's, there's special effects in this movie, but it's different type, you know, it's practical or in camera. There is no CGI back then. So I love the action in this film. I love the chase scene when they're in the market, you know, and the dude comes with the sword. He throws the sword and he just shoots him. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, like, I love that part. I love that whole chase scene. There's a little comedy mixed in with a lot of the action. I love the fight with the big Nazi guy with the mustache uh, at the plane. Uh, and he gets wrecked by the propeller. I love the, uh, I love that explosion. Like, I, it's, it's all great. It's all well filmed. It's exciting. I gave it a five. All right. <clears throat> I guess I'm going to be evil Alex in this one. Oh, all right. Okay. So when we look at this, does it have action? Right? Because that's where we this this category is action. It's not and I understand what you're talking about, set pieces and all that. But that's not action. Okay, we're we're talking about action. You got the boulder in the beginning. (laughs) (laughs) You got the boulder in the beginning, him running from the tribe, right? Him in the in the in the alley, right? When he's running to get Marion and all that. You got the explosion in the market. Yeah. Yeah, the marketplace. Then you got the other one. Where it's towards the end, right? Like he go, he jumps on the submarine, right? And then he he um he punches the guy, changes clothes, and then he goes to the end. Also, when you see them, like don't look at it, Marion, and he's all tied up. And then you see like the ghost becomes like evil. Yeah, has it? The whole not long much. truck chase scene is like fifteen minutes long. It is, it is, it is. The truck <laughs> scene is pretty. It, yeah. That's pretty. Like that's the longest actually action in this film. If you really yes. look at it, is that truck piece? You are yeah. right, absolutely right. This is an an adventure movie, so you're not going to get these crazy shootouts. And in, even in the sure. bar in the beginning, had some shootouts, oh, yeah. right? Because you had the bar yeah. them fighting. With yeah. that, I gave it a three and a half. Another three and a half because it didn't have much action. Like it, like like this category is action, right? Like for me. Yeah. When I look at action, I'm looking at how much time that Indiana Jones was like, you know, shooting, punching, doing whatever. You're right. He did do a lot of driving and stuff. So, all right, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll negate the three and a half. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll no, take if you, away. If you no, 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 no. I'll Give take away. No, no, I'll take away the three and a half because I totally forgot about the bar until I said it now. So I'll give it a four. I get a four. Okay. It's not a solid okay. five. Round it up. By yeah, I, yeah, I round it up by four. All right, I'll give it a four in this department. Okay. Um, and yeah. You understand what I'm saying, though, right? Because when you're looking at, like, like let's say Romance in the Stone, that has action, too. Well, I think you're right. I, I totally see. This is a great I, this is a great discussion. So I'm glad we, we got, a, like, two extra minutes because we cut out some of the stuff at the beginning because this is a good discussion to have about action movies real quick. So, you know, when we're talking about action, you know, it's 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 a very personal way you look at it, right? Alex looks at it a certain way. I look at it slightly different. We've always talked about it. You know, we both kind of consider quantity. I think in an action film, you always consider quantity, right? Like if there's yeah. no action at all, you're not going to get a good score. Right. Even if you have the greatest fight scene of all time, but that's the only action scene in the whole movie, I'm not going to give it a five. Right. But if you have maybe less action, but it's extremely well executed, I might score it higher. Alex may not. So it's just a good different, you know, we have a different view and the you listeners might look at action one way. You might agree with me. You might agree with Alex. You might be somewhere in the middle. You know what I mean? I love it. I think it's a great, you know, there's there are differences in how we look at it and how, how we score it. So yeah, absolutely. You know, four sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. You got a four, you got a five from Nate. All right, let's get to storyline. Yeah. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I, this is, this is a five. I mean, what, listen, <laughs> we're talking about, we're talking about a stone cold classic film. You know, people throw that word around a lot. It's a classic. You know what I mean? This is a classic. To me, a classic does not just mean it's old. You know how some people equate old with classic. 
I equate old with old or vintage or yeah. something like that. But it doesn't mean it's a class. This is a classic movie. If I went up to my niece and asked her if she'd ever heard of Indiana Jones, I know she's never seen any of these. I'm sure she's heard the name Indiana Jones. It's iconic. It doesn't stay. You don't stay in the in the in the realm of pop culture for 40 years if you're not a classic. All right. With that, this is a great one of the greatest adventure movies that there have just has ever been made. Period. You get uh, temples. You get natives. You get Nazis. You have ancient artifacts. You they tie in biblical stuff. You know, someone uh, me, someone you know, raised in church and things, and no, you know, hearing about the lost ark. I, I I heard all this stuff when I was a kid in Sunday school and things like that. You know, like I'm very familiar. It's great. There's something for everybody. There's historical stuff. There's m- maybe to some might be like mystical stuff. To others might be real life. It's all blended extremely well with very very likable characters that you want to follow. So yeah, it's I I, I have no issues at all with any of the story. Five. You know, it's funny because like when you look at this film, that is its strength is story, right? Like if you look yep. at it, like when we're breaking this down and you really look at it, the villain, eh, right? Look at it. I mean, he's good. Great actor. But he was eh, yeah. right. Sure. You look at the action scenes. Not much. Eh, but you're sure. intrigued for the story because you're going, wow, is he going to get that arc? Is he going to put it in the museum? Like, you know what I mean? Like you're invested yep. in. You're in the journey with Indiana Jones. It really, in reality, we kept talking about that in the Matrix. Like I kept bringing that up, right? Like, are we in the journey with Neo? No, we were not. Yeah. Like the story didn't give us that journey style. This one, it did. I felt like I was with him every step of the way going to the arc. Like whatever, where he lost a, a timepiece, and you're like, crap, you bullock, right. you want to punch him in the face. You felt yeah. that, right? I'm with you. The storyline with the Jesus Christ arc thing. Loved it. I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, I yep. love like it the way they in the way they interject all this into the story felt so real, right? Like when yeah. you were a kid and you saw this, you were like, I want to be an archaeologist. Like, I want to look for artifacts. Like, is there a school for this crap? Right. And then you find out it ain't like this. Like you're gonna find a treasure. No, you're actually just gonna be like digging digging dirt, dirt somewhere. It's not very exciting. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Look, with that said, I totally agree with you. I gave this a flat out five in story because I was like, there was no way I could give this a four and a half or nothing because the story is just what got gravitated me to the movie and more. Even watching it now, I was just like, okay, this is a really good story and it does not get old. Well, we're nope. 40 years in and we're getting well, the, you know, the 4K came out and we're rewatching and, it. Know, and it's, they're really smart because, and I'm sorry to, yeah. uh, to cut you off, but they're really smart because the movie was m- released in 81, but it's set like in the 50s or something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's set old so that when you do that, it doesn't 36. Date. 19, okay, 1930s. It's set in the 30s. Yeah. So this is when the Nazis are still kind of coming up. They're not like, it's not World War II. It's pre-World War II. So it's genius because now you have a movie that is already set in the 30s. So it's not dated. So when you watch it 40 years later, it still feels as fresh as it did when it came out. You know what I mean? And even just the scene, like, if you like storyline, even just the scene where they're at the college, Indy, his mentor guy, and then the two guys that Marcus, are going to hire him. Yeah. Yeah. I love that scene. Like, they're just talking about it. And he's like, come on, guys. Didn't you go to Sunday school? Like, you never heard of this thing? Like, all that. You know, like, yeah. they're building the uh, the intrigue of the arc itself. They they build up the artifact to so you're like, dang, I want to see it. I want, you know, they got the picture. He's like, what's this? It's like, it's lightning. It's like, oh, crap. When they find this thing, what's going to happen? Like. Yeah. It's a perfect storytelling. If you look at the talent involved, it's unsurprising. Spielberg, George Lucas, Lawrence Kasdan, like, how could it not be? Uh, and it, it, it is, you know, perfect for both of us. So there you go. Yeah, no, no, I I, I agree with you. All right, overall, entire piece. It, it's a five. It's a five out of five. The villain doesn't, uh, he's the only thing I didn't give a five, but he doesn't make the movie not a 10, if that makes any sense, right? Yeah. The movie didn't need an amazing villain. It literally could have just been the Nazis in, in general and, and Indy trying to get this thing and trying to stop them from getting it. And I still would have gave it a 10. You know what I mean? So it's not one of those situations where it, the movie hinges on having a great villain uh, because they have the greatest villain of all time in the actual history, which is the Nazis. So, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a perfection. It's got great performances. I love Marion. I love their dynamic. She's and she is a hands down. I'm saying it now. Hands down the best lead in any of the four Indiana Jones, movies. a female lead, best female lead in any of the four movies. And I'm not counting her character in Crystal Skull. I mean, this version of Marion in Raiders <laughs> yeah. is the best female lead in the series. Yeah, I don't care. You know, we're going to tackle the other ones. I don't care. I'm, I'm just calling it now for me. Okay. She's the best one. And I love her. 
I love I love Sala. I love Indy. I love everybody. I love the the way it looks. It's all in the desert and the jungles and the collie. Everything looks great. It's well shot. Like this, perfect. Five out of five. <laughs> I, I will say this. You know, it's funny. I knocked the the action. You know, I know I, I know a lot of people are gonna you know write down or you know are you really you pick on that or the villain <laughs> like I it yeah. is what it is but. Sure. Those were the weakest points in the film, right? If you look at it, but I enjoy the boulder. I'm not saying I did it. Those are iconic pieces, right? Like if you really think about yeah. it, that whole set oh, yeah. is the Everyone iconic. Knows that part. Yeah, that's like yeah. the biggest. Even in, in Universal Studios or whatever the hell it is, you see that the show. That's like the big thing is the boulder going down and he's running away from it. So and that's in the first like ten minutes. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> the, the, movie, the, the most classic scene, the, the most biggest piece set piece of the whole movie is in the ten minute into the film. So you already know you're set for something, right? Um, yep. I gave this a five. I was not going to lower it at all. I agree with you. Marion is really good. Even in the beginning when they introduced her drinking with the guy, which is oh, mad I love funny. That scene. She I like he just smiles and falls over. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always funny. That was funny. I love that whole bar scene. Because, you know, it's funny. It's very, I hate movies that are action and slapstick. Like, remember how I talked about it in uh, Hobbs and Shaw? Like, I hate that yeah. whole dynamic thing. But this movie, it worked. For some reason, there's something about this film that that slapstick comedy is mad hilarious in this movie. They don't right? go over the top. I think they that's don't. why. Yeah, and yeah. I think so. Like he's like whiskey. And she gives him a bottle. He cracked it over her head. His uh, the guy's yeah. head. I thought that was like hilarious. But oh, and the thing I liked about this film also is the shadows. Like the way they use the shadows. Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Like the minute he yes. entered the bar, you see the big silhouette of Indy. Right. Like yeah. he's like cool. And she knows. She's like, oh, yeah. Guy. This guy's here. Yeah, and then um, and then when he leaves the bar, you see him like open the door, and it's like him in the dark, and all you see is his yeah. eyes. I loved it. Yeah. I was like, "Yo, this is crazy, son." And oh, I, I always love that scene too. You're right, yeah. and like where he turns and looks at her, and then like only his eyes are yeah, there. like the shadow, yeah, right? Like, it looks yeah. just crazy. I was like, "Man, he's Batman." I was like, "This is crazy." Yeah. Like he just, but you know what? I loved it. I was like, "Man, this looks really good." But you get through that throughout the whole movie, right? Like that's the mystery of Indiana Jones. You, then you get to sprinkle the comedy going towards like, and then it starts to lighten up when it goes into the adventure, right? It wasn't as dark yeah. in the beginning. It starts to lighten up. And that's what I liked about this film. And that's why I gave it a five. All right. So total points. Oh, and by the way, my one of my favorite scenes, and I forgot how funny it was, uh, the scene where they're on the boat. So I went to see this at the theater. My younger brother came in and another friend of ours, and he had never seen it. Um, he's in his mid twenties, never seen the movie. So I was like, come oh, wow. you know, let's go see it. In the, let's go see it in the theater. You know, you got to show, you got to show the young people the classics. So we all cracked up too, and I always forgot, but I always love it when they're on the boat and, and towards the end, and him and Marion are in the room, and oh, she flips the mirror and hits him with the mirror, oh, yeah. and the screaming, <laughs> like the sound, the sound effect, and the scream. Yeah, it, I we la- I laughed for like a minute straight, like I could not stop laughing. Yeah. I love that. It's like that's the comedy in this movie. Like it's not a comedy, but there's just these little moments that are just like really funny that will make you laugh. When the little monkey dies, like I always laugh too. I think it's funny. Um, anyway, total <laughs> points. <laughs> he died. When he eats the bad date. Yeah, he, the little, the little, well, the monkey was evil because he's a traitor, first of all. Um, so he eats the date and he's poisoned and then he dies. I love oh, that part. Um, it's a 24 out of a 25. The okay. only minus one was for the villain yeah. for me. Uh, but either way, it's, it's a perfect movie. I have no complaints. I wouldn't change anything about it. I love it. 24 out of 25. For me, it's a 22 and a half. Um, like I said, I lowered it by one point, uh, the action, and then three and a half for the movie villain. Other than that, it's a solid five across the board from the hero all the way through storyline overall. And again, yeah. I'm not taking away the storyline. I'm just saying those two are the things that bother me, but I enjoy the entire thing. And I'm not saying I'm never going to see it again because it's my favorite one, uh, me and my wife's favorite movie. It's awesome. But yeah. So, Nate, you know what to do. Yeah. So next week, we got a double whammy, a whopper, a big time for Alex. Now, Uh from what I understand, one of his favorite movies and maybe I think his favorite of the franchise. Spoiler. I don't know. We're going to find out. Temple of Doom next week. (laughs) Um, And then also Judge Dredd for our (laughs) Sylvester Stallone (laughs) week. So it's going to be a good week. For Mr. Al. Uh, And then, um, of course, later this week, keep an ear out for our review of Assassins, which I'm very much looking forward to uh, talking about with with my buddy here. So those are the next couple podcasts coming up. (laughs) Keep an ear out and an eye out for those. Oh, I can't wait. But again, guys, if you want to follow us on our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews or check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Movie Reviews. Anything Action Movie Guys podcast, follow us on Instagram at Action Movie Guys podcast. And of course, check out our website, which is leveldegeeks.com slash podcast. You get all the podcasts from number one all the way up to the latest version of the podcast. And then, of course, the video versions will be sprinkled out um, the more we keep updating the site. 
And of course, other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm your host, Alex Figueroa, and that is Nate from Netflix Reviews. Be awesome to each other and geek out.